Hello there, and welcome back to Movies with McLean. I'm Andrew McLean, and this is my weekly movie podcast where I talk movie news, I review movies, I bring on guests and uh, interview them about movies. Uh, we have a great time on the show here. Uh, today it's just me, I don't have any guests. Uh, I'm talking about one of my favorite movie franchises, uh, the Terminator franchise. Uh, but before I get into that talk, as always, I'll do the movie news. It'll probably be a shorter show uh, because it's just me. Uh, about 25 minutes probably, but uh, the first major news story that came out in the past week, Michael B. Jordan will appear in uh, Black Panther in 2018. Black Panther will be directed by Ryan Coogler, who uh, directed Michael B. Jordan in Creed and Fruitvale Station. So uh, he joins the cast with Chadwick Boseman, uh, I think, as Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman. And I think the rumor is that Michael B. Jordan will be a villain, which uh, we already have Andy Serkis, uh, who played Claw in Avengers Age of Ultron. Claw is a Black Panther villain, so he might appear in the movie. And um, I'm going to say a quick Civil War spoiler, so jump ahead like 15 seconds if you haven't seen Civil War yet. Uh, it looks like Zemo might be in the Black Panther movie since he was with Zemo at the end of that movie. So uh, the spoiler is over. Um, so I think this is great news. Um, uh, Michael B. Jordan is an excellent actor. It's a great addition to this cast. Uh, Ryan Coogler has said that it's going to be a, uh, 90% African American cast. I think that's awesome because there was all those complaints at the Oscars about how, um, there were not any, uh, black people nominated for any of the major awards. And I think that real, the real problem is that there's just not enough opportunity for black people or African Americans in the business. And uh, I think that this is excellent. It'll give um, opportunities to a lot of African Americans. Uh, I don't know if Lupita Nyong'o is confirmed or she's rumored, but she would also be an excellent uh, addition to that cast if she's not already a part of it. And I, I mean, I think that it should be a mostly African American cast taking place in. Uh, Wakanda. So I, I just think that that's great that Ryan Coogler is doing this and he's getting talented African-American actors. Michael B. Jordan was incredible in Creed. Um, I didn't see Fruitvale Station but I heard that that movie was uh, praised by critics and that he gave an excellent performance in that as well. And uh, obviously he knows how to work with Ryan Coogler so I I think this is ex this is exciting news. Michael B. Jordan is excellent so I look forward to seeing that movie in 2018, uh, probably one of my most anticipated upcoming Marvel releases. Uh, the next n news piece, also in comic book movies, Patrick Stewart is confirmed to reprise his role as uh, Professor X in the upcoming Wolverine sequel. Uh, there, it was already mentioned that, or it was already known that Professor X would be in the movie, but we didn't know if it'd be McAvoy or Stewart. Uh, playing Professor X, I think it's great news that uh, Stewart is reteaming with um, with uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Those two guys have been playing uh, those roles since the first X Men movie in 2000, so they've been playing the roles for 17 years now. That is just incredible. I mean, that's a really long time. 18 actually, by the time the movie comes out, um, and they're both incredible actors and they were meant to play that role. Hugh Jackman was born to play Wolverine, Patrick Stewart was born to play for Professor X. I love them in both of those roles and I think that um, that this is a great addition and it makes sense. Of course there's the rumor that it's going to be the Old Man Logan story. Um, I, I, don't, I haven't read that so I don't know exactly how Professor X uh, ties into that but um, anytime he's on screen uh, is great in the X-Men movies. So I look forward to that, and uh, that comes out early next year. Um, it might be February. They might be doing a February re February release like they did with Deadpool. So uh, also exciting news. And the final news piece, I uh, apologize for my voice, uh, final news piece, uh, also comic book movies. Uh, we talk a lot of comic book movies. Uh, Warner Brothers has announced a Harley Quinn movie uh, featuring Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn and a largely female cast. Uh, so, this could be, uh, like, the Birds of Prey, if you don't know what that is. It's, like, a, a female team of, um, like, 
sort of anti-heroes and heroes uh, in DC Comics. Mostly Batman characters such as like Harley Quinn, uh, Batgirl, Poison Ivy. So that's interesting. Um, I, I haven't like read a Birds of Prey comic or anything. But I mean, Margot Robbie I think was an excellent choice for Harley Quinn. And from what we've seen in the trailers, she looks uh, like she does a good job playing Harley Quinn as that as crazy I mean she, she looks great and um, I my opinion might change after I see the movie but right now this is exciting um, it it'll give more opportunities for female uh, superheroes uh, for more women because like really we have Wonder Woman Harley Quinn that's about it that's in the DC right now uh, in the movies at least so we could get a Poison Ivy or a Batgirl not that they're superheroes uh, Poison Ivy is a villain but Still be a great um, chance for a woman to have a role in the DC comic book movies, and I think it could be a lot of fun. I mean, uh, this uh, this Suicide Squad movie looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, like with some dark humor mixed in. So I think that um, that could also be uh, fun as well. So I look forward to that. Uh, all all good news uh, this week. Um, so moving on, I'm going to get into my main topic today which is the Terminator movies. I'm just going to discuss each movie, each of the five movies, in order. Uh, what's What I like about them, uh, what I don't like about the later ones. So we'll get into that right now. Starting off, the Terminator, 1984, Arnold, um, Michael Bean, Linda Hamilton, directed by James Cameron. Great movie. Uh, it was low-budget film, uh, so not a lot of heavy like action set pieces, but... Um, it's got the suspense. Arnold is the villain in this one, and he's going after Sarah Connor. Um, Kyle Reese comes back uh, to save her, and it's it's got like a real horror vibe, sci-fi horror. Um, and I these movies I've grown up with them. I've loved them my whole life, and this is uh, one of the best. Um, well, there's only really two good ones, but second best I'd say. Uh, I think Arnold has such charisma, and uh, he's I mean, he's pretty menacing in this movie. Uh, uh, he it really solidified him as like uh, a good actor because like he was like a bodybuilder before. Obviously, I know he'd been in like Conan the Barbarian, but this was the first like main one that put him on the uh, just put his name out there in Hollywood. And he's made some good movies since then, some bad movies, but this was the first excellent uh, movie that Arnold was the star of. And I think that um, Linda Hamilton also does a great job. Uh, I love the scene at the police station, of course, uh, with, with the line that everyone repeats. and that, But that scene's also just so suspenseful as he goes through there after Sarah Connor. And it's really intense, and it's uh, just an incredible movie. A lot different from all of the others on here because it had such a low budget, so they relied on the suspense and the horror much more than the action. But uh, it is still a, an action movie, and it, I love it, so... Uh, and a great poster as well. Um, so, moving on to Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Uh, this is my favorite action movie of all time. Uh, I know most people like Die Hard better. Die Hard's up there. Mad Max Fury Road is actually up there. But Terminator 2, Judgment Day, in my opinion, is the greatest action movie of all time. Uh, of course, this is when Arnold is uh, now protecting uh, John Connor and Sarah Connor. Uh, and then the T-1000, played by Robert Patrick, is the villain. Uh, so, there's so many incredible action scenes in this movie, um, especially, like, uh, the motorcycle scene where, uh, he's, he's chasing, uh, T-1000 is chasing, um, Arnold and John Connor on the, on the motorcycles. Uh, the kid who plays John Connor, he's so annoying, but, uh, it's, it's really not important to the movie that, um, I mean, it really doesn't, like, lower your enjoyment of the movie because he's annoying because Arnold is on screen and he get he has more of a chance to be uh, charismatic in uh, this movie than he does because in the first one because he has like a lot more dialogue uh, he ha he has that great relationship with John Connor where he teaches him uh, about like humanity really and uh, I'm just gonna say a quick spoiler alert uh, go ahead like 30 seconds this like this movie has the best death scene of any movie ever if you can call it a death like when Arnold because he's a cyborg when Arnold goes down under the um, 
under the molten metal, whatever, and puts his, uh, gives him the thumbs up. That's just an incredible scene, and it, it shows how he has, um, become humanized and, uh, understands humans a little bit now. Uh, so that's, I guess that's enough for the spoilers, I, because I said 30 seconds, um, and, I mean, the T-1000 is just an incredible villain, he's scary, I mean, uh, uh he's, he's real menacing, and I love, like, when, uh, you see him at, uh, at John Connor's house, and he's on the phone, and you see that he's, like, uh, put his, like, finger through, <laughs> through John Connor's, like, foster parents and killed them both. Uh, it's just, like, really creepy, but it's awesome. And then when Sarah Connor's in the, um, in that, like, mental hospital place, and he's, he is the floor, like, it, it's just awesome. He's a great, uh, villain, and, uh, the way that they try to take him out with the, uh, liquid nitrogen is incredible. Um, another great one-liner, hasta la vista, baby. Probably better than, uh, I'll be back, just, uh, people don't use it as well. Actually, a lot of people I know haven't seen this. I'm surprised. Uh, if you haven't seen Terminator 2, uh, go ahead and watch it. You should probably watch the first one, uh, if you haven't seen it first. But these are the two good ones, and they're both incredible. So I highly recommend, uh, to anyone who hasn't seen these, uh, go out and watch both Terminator, the Terminator and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. They're some of my favorite action movies of all time, and I think anyone can really enjoy them as well. So, um, I think we'll be done really quickly, actually. Uh, the third movie, uh, the third Terminator movie came out in 2003, uh, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Uh, this was the first one that wasn't so good. Uh, didn't have Linda Hamilton back as Sarah Connor. Had a different actor as John Connor at a much older age. Um, I, it, it wasn't terrible, but, uh, it was not a very good movie. Um, the one, one thing I do like is that we got to see, um, the, like, we got to see Judgment Day in this movie because we saw when, like, the bombs went off and the start of all of that, and I, I think it is cool that we, um, actually saw what they talked about so much in the first two movies, uh, happen, and that, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about that when I talk about the next movie, um, but that, that was one thing that was pretty cool, uh, I didn't like the guy who played John Connor, and he had, like, a relationship with this girl, I didn't like um, the girl either very much, I, I just thought that, um, it kind of was distracting, like, uh, they weren't very good actors, and, uh, it, it wasn't what I wanted to see in a Terminator movie, um, I want to see action, and, I, I mean, we did, we did get Arnold, and he's very charismatic, so, that, that's always a plus, um, he wasn't in the next one, but, with, like, how they handled the situation with Linda Hamilton, they were just, I think they just said that Sarah Connor died of cancer or something, like, they just said that, mentioned that once, like, she was, like, the main character in the other movies, um, and then she's just not in this one because she died of cancer, like, I, I mean, I, I get that they probably couldn't, like, uh, negotiate her contract, but, like, they could have handled that situation maybe a little better, um, instead of just mentioning her once and then being done with that, um, but it, it wasn't a great movie, uh, it might be my least favorite, um, but there's some things to like. So you, don't watch this, don't watch this one, it's a waste of your time, watch the first two if you haven't seen them. Uh, the fourth Terminator movie, Terminator Salvation. Now, when this was coming out, I was, like, incredibly hyped for this movie, like, as hyped as I was for, uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, uh, last year, that's how hyped I was when I was, like, ten years old and this movie was coming out, because, like, as, as much as I love Star Wars now, I loved Terminator back then, which is weird because they're, like, really gritty, R-rated, violent movies, but I love them. And I was disappointed. Um, it was cool that we got to see, like, actually in the future during the war, uh, when it's set, but, again, I think they focused on the wrong thing too much, like, they focused on, um, Sam Worthington's character, how he was, like, part cyborg, part human, and, like, hit the conflict he was going through, uh, that was just kind of boring. I didn't really care about it. Uh, I think they could have done so much cool stuff with the action in that war. And I think they did do some of it, but not enough. They focused too much on this other, um, plot. The, the plot wasn't handled well. I did like, uh, Christian Bale as John Connor. I thought he was good. But we didn't get Arnold, which was disappointing. It's like, 
you can't have a Terminator movie without Arnold. They they use like a CGI Arnold that wasn't even him, I think, in the end. But it, it wasn't a great movie either. Um, I haven't watched it in a long time. Uh, I think it's better than Rise of the Machines, but it, it was just a really disappointing movie. Uh, it just shows like without James Cameron, these movies aren't uh, aren't great, and uh, they don't reach their potential without him. I don't know if he'll ever come back to the franchise because he'll be locked up with Avatar for such a long time. But, uh, it's not, I don't, if you want to watch it, I mean, it's alright. Don't watch Terminator 3, that's a pretty bad movie. Um, the last Terminator movie, Terminator Genesis, I'm gonna be completely honest, I did not even see it because I know that these movies aren't good anymore and I didn't want to waste my time. Uh, it does have Daenerys Targaryen, Khaleesi, uh, Mother of Dragons, The Unburned, Breaker Chains, whatever. Uh, Three-time Intercontinental WWE Champion Amelia Clark in the movie. But, um, I mean, she's great in Game of Thrones. She's really hot, but she uh, is not enough to get me to go see um, a bad Terminator movie. So I didn't see it, and I hope that no one else saw it because it looked pretty bad. I heard that Arnold was good, which is... Uh, to be expected, but nothing else was good. I mean, I haven't seen the movie. This is just what I've heard, and I thought it looked pretty terrible. I did not like um, the look of Jason Clark as um, John Connor and how they made him a villain. At least that's what it looked like. So I was I I was not interested enough to go see Genesis. Um, so yeah, this was actually a really short episode. But thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, I it was a short episode because I'm in like finals week and. I'll be back next week with a big episode. Um, we're doing X-Men and Spider-Man movies. So it should be um, a great episode. It's another one of those brackets that we've done. I think those always work really well. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, I have big things planned for this summer. Uh, big improvements coming for the show. So look forward to that. Um, and yeah, just please share this show with your friends. Uh, uh, I'll put I'll put a link on Twitter uh, if you want to retweet that that'd be great and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. So uh, thanks for watching and until next week may the force be with you.